everyone. I'm here today with nine day old Lucas Francis and we would like to talk about effective positioning at the breast today and um, explain why it is so important that your baby is effectively positioned at the breast. It's very important that your baby is deeply attached to your breast so that the nipple rests at the comfort zone which is the junction between the hard and the soft palate so that you won't get sore and won't get sore nipples. It's also important your baby is deeply attached so that the baby is able to transfer milk um, rather than being just superficially attached to the nipple. If babies are superficially attached to the nipple, your nipple will rub against their hard palate, which is at the front of the mouth and will make you very sore. And baby will have to spend a very long time feeding, but effectively not getting very, very much milk at all, very little milk. Um, so it will become very frustrating for you and baby. You will get sore and baby will spend a very long time feeding but not um, get the milk that baby needs and perhaps um, be slow to put on weight or even lose weight. So you want to make sure your baby gets a deep latch and in order for baby to get a deep latch, you need to position your baby effectively. So there are a few principles to follow um, to achieve good positioning at the breast. There is one word that you might want to memorize, which can help you um, follow those um, principles of good positioning. The word is chin and chin stands for, so the initials are C for close. So have your baby close, H for head free and in line with the body is for I. Also, I stands for the chin should be deeply indented into the breast. So when your baby is coming to the breast, you want them to come onto the breast with their chin leading rather than having their chin on their chest. That way they will be only superficially attached to the breast and also they will have difficulty swallowing if their chin is deeply into the chest rather than a little bit extended which will make the airways and also their food pipe um, wider and free for them to swallow more easily. And then finally N st stands for nose to nipple. So when you're starting out positioning baby at the breast you want to start out the nose opposite the nipple or the nipple opposite the nose so that when baby comes on so you can brush the nipple a little bit against the nose that will encourage baby to open their mouth and then they open wide tip their head back a little bit and then they can draw in the nipple far back to the soft spot of the palate rather than coming on centrally so if you have the nipple opposite the mouth your baby will just open the mouth a little bit seal their lips around the nipple and just start suckling on the nipple rather than deep on the breast. And if they just suckle on the nipple, the nipple is only the outlet of the milk. They have to really attach deeply into the breast. So not just the nipple, also the areola. If you go back to where your hand express, you actually express right at the edge of the areola. You don't squeeze the nipple. And that's the same thing babies need to do when they're latching on. So we'll go back to positioning now because that's um, what can help to achieve you a deep latch. If your baby is positioned correctly, you're already halfway there to a good latch. So we'll look at the principles that we've just um, talked about. So we um, take the word chin and start with C, have your baby close. So when you're starting out um, in the trip, traditional holds, the cradle or cross cradle holds. So we start with the cross cradle hold because the cross cradle hold is easier with a newborn baby or a small baby. The cradle hold is easier once your baby's 
baby has learned how to attach. The cradle hold would just be simply, this is the traditional cradle hold. But we start out with the cross cradle hold, whereby we will just use our opposite arm to the breast that we are going to offer. And then we have more control to actually bring baby to the breast. Okay, so we start with keeping the baby close. So first of all, if you have any towels or blankets, just take that off the baby, remove that off the baby. You don't want any gaps between you and baby. You want to really bring your baby as close um, and as deeply into your body as possible. So you, that's the first step. So you want to bring your baby close. At the same time, when you're guiding them onto the breast, you want their head free. So you don't want to hold your hand on baby's head and push the baby to the breast. They will resist that. And also if you're pushing baby's head into the breast, so imagine if you're pushing baby's head into the breast, if you're pushed by the head, what happens is that your chin will dig into your chest. And we don't want that. As we said, we want the chin extended a little bit so that the chin can come onto the breast first and baby can come onto the breast chin leading so what we do is we cup the baby's neck and shoulders so you make kind of that c shape again with your hand and just cup the baby's neck and shoulders and then you clamp baby's bottom under your elbow really tightly and the next principle is that you want to keep baby's head and body in a straight line so you don't want to have baby's head near the breast but the body turned because that will be that will be difficult for him to swallow if I offer the breast like that because his head is twisted and that will make it difficult for baby to swallow imagine if you're taking a drink of water you're drinking like that. You also have your head and body in a straight line. If you're twisted like that, it will make it hard for you to swallow. And that's the same for the baby. By the viewing breast. the material of this online course, you're agreeing to accept all parts of the terms and conditions and medical disclaimer. In brief, this online course is not intended to be a substitute for the professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment provided by your own medical provider. The information provided is for educational and informational purposes only and not to be regarded as individual medical advice. The information has not been evaluated by any governing or professional body. Please refer to the full terms and conditions for more details.